Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another Salem UMC live stream service with us. Uh, we're so glad you're joining us, uh, either on your car, on your way home. Uh, hopefully you're not watching and driving at the same time. Um, from your home, from your house, from maybe a grandparent's house or a mom or dad's house. Uh, we're so glad you're joining us, however you're joining us, uh, just for some more time with Jesus this morning. Uh, to get our service started out, let's get this kicking uh, with just a, a one real quick announcement. And that was a big thank you to everyone this morning that made the Arbor service possible. Uh, it was fantastic to be all together under the Arbor, socially distanced, mass arms, but being able to sing uh, and just enjoy some praises to God uh, all together as a, as a church family again. Again. Uh, so thank you to everyone who put that on to make that uh, a thing uh, and happen and we'll be doing it again next week and encourage you to come out uh, and enjoy that uh, next week as well uh, but I'll tell you what let's just get right into it this morning and join me because we have our praise band here live this week and we're gonna let them call us to worship so join me in some worship this morning live again. Uh, but uh, let's go to the Lord and worship for an opening prayer this morning. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this day and so much for another opportunity to spend time together with you in your presence as a church family wherever we are, Lord. I just pray that as, as we calm ourselves and calm our spirits and take a deep breath in, that we breathe in your life, 
we breathe out all the negative, all the hustle and bustle, all the stress and worry and anxiety that we've had on our hearts and on our lives, Lord. I just pray we come to you this morning in the spirit of calm, in the spirit of worship and thanksgiving for the many blessings that you give us each and every day, Lord. Uh, let your spirit move in us and you'll let your spirit move in whatever place we're in this morning. Uh, come Holy Spirit and fill our cup. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
whisper on the breeze The world is waking And I am here to meet you on my knees When I'm with you my soul finds rest Leave it in your hands The day keeps coming Pulling me a million different ways I'm always running But never seem to catch the things I chase When I'm with you my soul finds rest Leave it in your hands Every sorrow I leave it in your hands Every sickness I leave it in your hands All my failures I leave them in your hands My soul finds rest as I can leave it in your hands. Every promise I leave it in your hands. Every ceiling I leave it in. I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad to see you guys this morning. So glad uh, to, to be here uh, with you uh, this morning uh, and excited today, uh, very excited today 
to be with you guys uh, and, and gals this morning. Uh, a word of thanks uh, to the Team Wilson, to, to Carol and Doug, to, to Bobby and Donna and members of their family. I'll get in trouble trying to keep up with everyone this morning, uh, Heath and, and, and Jacob, but, but especially the Wilsons. I know they were here in the early morning hours uh, setting up for, for our first time. Uh, to be together in person as a body, uh, to be assembled together uh, at the arbor. Uh, It was a beautiful morning. Um, I know there were lots of people who gathered, uh, some under the arbor, some out on picnic tables with little kids. Everybody was uh, safe distance. We had some in the cars for the drive-in. We hope uh, to gather again next Sunday and to see some of you uh, there. We also will be celebrating communion next Sunday. Uh, for the first time uh, together uh, for those that can. Now, again, we'll have a live stream uh, and would invite you and encourage you to, to uh, s- celebrate uh, from your home or your car or your camp or the beach or, or wherever you are. Um, we will open the office this week. I am excited to tell you that on July 1st, uh, we will begin having open office hours throughout the week uh, on Tuesdays through Thursdays. Now, July 1st is a Wednesday, I think. Uh, from 8.30 to 12.30, the office will be open half day. Uh, if you want to come and visit, uh, you might come to want to bring something for C. John or the Blessing Box. Uh, you, you might just want to come and visit. Um, when you come to, to the office and come to church to visit or to pray, it, it will be a little different than before. Um, we'll ask you when you come, please, to, to wear your mask. But once you come inside, uh, whether you're visiting the big office where it all happens and need to visit with, with uh, Miss Denise or, uh, or to meet up and visit with somebody else, uh, you might need to visit with Miss Suzanne. I know that, that in July we're going to be mailing uh, year-end statements halfway. Uh, just a lot of people have asked about the church and its finances, so we'll be mailing you personally your giving statement uh, this month. But again, the office will be open half a day from 8.30 to 12.30. We have some screens. I'm going to make my best invisible screen screen here uh, that shields uh, safety shields uh, on our desks Uh, and so once you come in and you sit down in in my office the little office or Denise's office uh, you can take your mask off and and sit down the the shield will be there that we can see each other and visit with each other but also uh, just to be uh, safe with each other Uh, I'm sure too if you uh, have an appointment as we move along you may be a part of the children team or the youth team Uh, Our staff has also been meeting virtually through this whole time uh, every week on Zoom. Uh, But we're going to have our staff and our leadership team this Wednesday night, plus some adult leaders from praise team and Sunday school classes for a a quick little meeting and then set a time over the next several weeks, probably on Thursday night, so we're not in the way of the band, uh, to begin talking about the ways that we can safely um, reopen portions of our church life uh, for families and Sunday schools and worship and that sort of thing, but also with our community partners in our church, um, with the Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and the 4-H and the homeschool and the, the different groups that are here. But let me say, having said all that, which was very exciting, we remain closed. We're still closed. We're still closed. Uh, we're, we're like a duck, I decided this morning. It looks really lovely on the surface if you're a duck hunter. Bobby would nod his head. They're moving so gracefully through the water. But truly, uh, they're a little bit like me below the water. It's this. Uh, and so two things are going to be happening. A lot of this. And yet very slowly. Um, We hope to have service under the arbor. And again, please hug, honk, drive by, call, text, tweet, send a card, uh, call on and lift up these people who have made this happen. Um, Who have made this happen. Who while you were sleeping in or having toast, uh, they were up here three generations deep. Not just uh, pop, but the grands uh, up here carrying and hauling equipment and setting up like it was camp meeting and and, and without them, it wouldn't happen. So, uh, again, we're going to slowly begin to move along. We will have, you know, technology to use with some of this. We'll try to uh, do our best to, to send some emails and, importantly, to make some videos of what to expect. We'll ultimately have some little videos for before we open that our pre-launch team will make about what to expect when you get here, uh, about what the sanctuary will look like because it will look different. 
um, that you won't see the Bibles and the hymnals in the pews. We'll be using the screens only uh, for an extended period of time. Uh, when you come in, you'll find that we'll have uh, tables where you can use some hand sanitizer, and we'll want you to please wear your mask and w every Sunday and keep it on. Um, we have masks provided if you should forget yours. Um, the same outside. We ask if you're going to get out of your car to, to wear your mask and to, to keep it on. If you got here and it was a whoops, you don't have to turn around and go home. We have disposable masks. You're welcome to use a mask. Uh, there, we won't be passing offering baskets. It'll look different. Uh, if you have an offering or, or a prayer card you want to leave, there will be a basket in the back of the arbor, or when we open, there will be a basket in the back of the sanctuary. We'll, we'll be doing our best to, to not touch or pass things. Um, the exception is we, we will try to celebrate communion together next week. I have some of those delicious styrofoam things that the Pope calls a wafer uh, that are in those, and I can't remember the holy word, so I'm going to say plastic shot glass. They're prepackaged with Welch's. Ours are the Welch's uh, and we will have them in little baggies. There will be a couple in each one so if you're one of those big families that needs four or five or six you'll just pick up two or three bags. We won't be passing trays. We won't be coming forward together. We, we won't be uh, using the, the chancel and, and that sort of thing for, for kneeling. We want to invite you just to pray where you are. Um, but uh, I, I'm excited about being together. I, I can't say it enough. This is the first time I've been truthfully, even though it looks like I'm really at church with everybody on Sundays and that you're missing out, the truth is that, that our team, Miss Carol and Mike and Bobby and the band, and ha have worked double time, triple time. And, and Reuben and most every week have come on Wednesday night and had rehearsal and, and, and recorded much of what you see on a Sunday. Um, I see them on, t on the screen uh, or on the phone, uh, usually on Miss Rachel's phone, sitting here in the pew and, and singing along with my mask on j just like you. Um, this is our first time to be together, uh, and I'm excited just to be with them and to hear them. Uh, a, f a couple of the ladies, three of the ladies are here as well, uh, singing today at a safe distance. Uh, I hope that next Sunday, after we do math, which won't be me, because I can add and count to ten, and we've been doing that all summer, um, but we'll be uh, using this new formula about safety and, and spacing uh, in our sanctuary and beyond, uh, all of our rooms and offices and things to know what the safe number is. But next week, uh, on the chancel, you'll see our praise uh, band, and you will probably see some of our Joyful Noise singers as well uh, with, with safe distancing. So, so it should be a joy. Um, uh, one more last thought to communion and to the office. If, if you're one that wouldn't uh, be able to get out and you would like to have one of the uh, uh, prepackaged uh, communion sets, come by the office or send somebody by or even call me. Uh, this week, we want to uh, share the little communions with, with anybody that would like to have them. Um, and again, the office will be open from 8.30 to 12.30. We'll close every day to clean. Uh, everything will be closed down on Mondays. Um, Brother Roger and, and Jolene will be here cleaning. And, and as we really open and have more things happening, we may need volunteers. But we will be closed, closed, closed on Mondays. Um, we'll be open half day from 8.30 to 12.30. And we'll wipe down the desks and the doors and the handles and we'll close. Um, and then in the afternoons, uh, the calls, the church calls and all that will be forwarded. Miss Denise will answer your call or call on her cell phone. I will be going visiting in the afternoons. And if it's your house, if it's safe and okay, uh, if, if I could come and visit with you or your neighbor, uh, I would be honored to come and sit on your porch. Uh, or even just pull up in the driveway and, and give you a wave. Uh, but I am thrilled. July 1st is the beginnings of being able to visit as Methodist ministers. Uh, I hope to find out more from some of the assisted and senior care facilities about what their rules are. Hmm. And uh, in any case, uh, I want to invite you that I would be glad to come visit you and come by. Um, I imagine, too, uh, that, that you may be a person, though, unlike a preacher, that you have to go to work every day. And he say, preacher, uh, I can't just drive up here and sit around and drink coffee in your office in the mornings. I understand. And I'm not sitting at home on my porch. Some of us are essential, and I'm grateful for you. I would love to, at your invitation... Uh, come and meet with you. Uh, either bring uh, uh, sweet tea and Jesus with me and sit down on the porch at your office if that's kosher or whatever. I, I would love to have the chance to be out and about in the afternoons uh, and to come see you. Uh, I know that was all 
a hot mess. Uh, we're going to have to figure this out. But we hope throughout July, as, as much as our team is willing and able, to gather for in-person worship out under the arbor. Um, I'll say rain or shine. Uh, and, and of course, even if it's a downpour and we run to the cars, you can turn on your radio. Uh, so we hope to have worship outside and next Sunday to have communion. I uh, want to invite you uh, to, to come and share. It was a great time this morning. It was so wonderful to see little children uh, at the picnic tables and, and about. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, time. Uh, but all, to, obviously, to be careful. If you're at risk, to, to stay home and to, to follow along in the stream. And I shouldn't overpromise, uh, but, you know, we hope that technology is going to work for us. Uh, it does when it does, and it, and it doesn't when it doesn't. There will be more to come about technology in the coming days, about our new YouTube page where you can find videos to watch during the week if you miss them on Sunday or Wednesday or what have you. There will be all kinds of content coming on our website. Uh, and, and we will begin over the next few weeks to play with something called Social Tables. Uh, you will receive information about it this week where you can begin to uh, RSVP in terms of coming to church. I know I'm going on and on, guys, but, but I'm trying to cover some of this with you rather than assault by email. Um, we're going to have a way for you to, to register your attendance to say, hey, I'm coming to the Arbor Sunday and there will be five Joneses or three Smiths uh, as a tool. Uh, and as we practice with that these next few weeks, we'll be more ready when we do open inside. Uh, uh, and in many of our spaces, not just our sanctuary when we open for worship, but many of our other spaces too. Your Sunday school class may be a lot more people than we can safely get inside. Uh, and so we will want to try to, to work at the app. As always, like I say though, the office will be open. If you're not a person, if you're like me and you're uh, Charlie Brown and the app never works, we will be here uh, and Miss Denise will be answering the phones, uh, you know, and, and we will work at this together. Uh, so pl please just be in prayer as we plan together. Um, after we meet on Wednesday night, we'll, we'll plan a few more times, probably on Thursdays, to, to meet as a team uh, a few more times this month and the next. And, and we're just going to have to take it as it comes. Things change every day and every week. The direction and instruction that I get um, from, from Little Rock. Uh, and so we remain closed uh, in general. Uh, but like I said, on Wednesday, we'll begin to be open a half day uh, for, from 8.30 to 12.30. Uh, enough of me with on and on. Uh, let me just say a couple words uh, about prayer and, and to pray with you. Um, f first, I, I want to lift up Susan Bondurant. I had a lot of people inquiring this week uh, and weekend. Uh, in fact, she uh, had blood clots, and Richard took her to UAMS. Uh, and long story short, throughout uh, the, the weekend, uh, determined that she needed to have uh, a procedure, which was done. Uh, it was delayed, but, but happened yesterday. Uh, she was in recovery, and, uh, and, and then this morning uh, spoke with Richard. In fact, he came and was sitting out outside the arbor. Uh, she's a little better and is now uh, in a regular room. And so just want to lift her up uh, in your thoughts and prayers uh, as we uh, pray for many in the life of the church. Uh, but, but let me now ask if we will uh, just to come to rest. I want to ask Laura if she might even play just for a minute that I can come to rest with you. Lord, sometimes it, it seems that, that nothing is happening. Uh, we, we have been so confined for so long, and, and yet in the same breath, it seems that the world and the country is going crazy. There's so much to process and to try to keep up with and understand, and it's, it's even three steps forward and two steps back, and, and then it's three steps back and two steps forward, and it seems we're right where we were. But Lord, uh, you have uh, been our help in ages past. Uh, Lord, you have uh, always been there 
for us and with us. Uh, we pray your, your healing for, for those who are sick. We pray your strength for the weak. We pray, Lord, for your peace in, in anxious moments. Uh, that we would not be anxious, but in everything by prayers, we would give our request to you, Lord God, and, and your peace would even pass our understanding. And so, Lord, when we sometimes even know, don't know what to do or say next, now we can simply pray as you teach us to live. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, kiddos. Um, I'm doing my children's time from up here. Brother Justin was actually just stalling a little bit for us. I have lost my microphone and I have walked all around this um, like sanctuary trying to find it and where I set it down. So I'm doing my children's time from up here for you. Oh, Miss Becky found it for me. <laughs> it's okay, I'm already up here, we're good. Okay, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we're flexible, this is what we're doing. Um, all right guys, so for children's time today, um, whenever Brother Justin gets up here in a little bit, he is going to talk about the word always. Um, and always means that it's there all the time, right? Um, there are some things that I always carry with me in my purse. Um, I always have my wallet. Um, and in my wallet, I have like my debit card, I have a pen, um, I have some gift cards that I still have yet to spend, so I probably need to call and see if there's still money left on them after all these years. Um, it has my car key, because it's a little thing that you should get close enough, it works. Um, so there's, I, I always have my wallet with me. Um, I always have my lipstick, although in the past four months I haven't worn a whole lot of it, because it goes behind your mask. But I always have it with me anyways. I have my mascara, and I have my hand sanitizer. So these are things that like I just always have with me. I'm sure your mom has some things in her bag that she always has with her, right? Um, I've got Band-Aids I always keep in there. It's just one of those mom things. I think it, I might even have some thread and um, a sewing needle if I need to really quick fix something. I know not all moms have that, but I do. Mr. Russell calls it my Mary Poppins purse because just anything and everything comes out of it. Um, but th I have these things with me all the time um, because I need to clean my hands. I've got to have my eyelashes fixed or you can't see my eyes. Um, you know, as a girl, you got to have your lips on. Um, and I have to have my, my driver's license and my key and my, my debit card if I'm going anywhere or buying anything. These are things I need. Um, but I also have a little um, um, Bible in my purse that I carry with me. Now, I don't always get it out like I should and read it whenever I'm sitting like waiting on my grocery pickup, um, but on my phone I have the Bible. Um, but even so, not just like physical thing I can hold, we always have God with us. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about that the past four months as we've been home. Um, God's love is with us each and every day, whether there's scary things on the news or there's good things on the news, um, whether we're going to school and seeing our friends or we're seeing our friends on the computer. Um, God is with us whether we're under the arbor for church or we're in our PJs at home for church. Um, God is with us whether we are getting to go have a play date with our friends and spend the night like we've been wanting to do forever or we're having to just sit at home and talk to him on the tablet looking at him like virtually. Um, God is with us through each and every one of those things. He's been with us from the moment we were born and we've had scary and different things that have happened all the way till now and he's going to be with us through the rest of our life and we're going to have things that are good that he's going to celebrate with us and we're going to have things that are maybe hard or scary that he's going to hold our hand and help us through all that. Um, so as important as the stuff probably in your mom's purse is, like she's got to have her mascara, she's got to have her lipstick, and she's got to have her hand sanitizer. The most important thing that each and every one of us carry with us each and every day is God's love. And I want you to remember that, that it is always, always with you. So let's pray real quick, guys. 
Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day, and I thank you for our church family. Um, I thank you so much that you promised to always be with us, and that means forever and ever, Lord. We have certain things that are important to us that we carry with us, Lord. Sometimes it's um, the special pen that maybe we got as a present. Um, sometimes it's our makeup, so we can make sure we look our best. But the most important thing that we carry with us, Lord, is your love deep down in our heart. Please help us to remember that and to make it a priority each and every day to talk to you because you are right there waiting and willing. Um, please keep us safe, and we pray all of this in your name. Amen. All right, kiddos, like I always tell you, make sure that you listen to your parents. Make sure you wash your hands. Remember that we love you, and most importantly, remember that God loves you. Our scripture lesson this morning is going to come from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 20. And it reads, Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The green? Okay. In the last of uh, June, in the last of our series of messages uh, this month about why we love our church, as we've talked about, we love our church because of Jesus. We love our church because of all the, the people. We love our church because it's that simple to, to love God and, and neighbor. Um, this Sunday morning, we read the last verse in, in the Gospel of St. Matthew. A at the end of the Gospel, near the end of, of Jesus' life on the earth in his body, as he walked and taught, as he uh, came to love, heal, and, and pray, as he came to offer the, the gift of salvation by the confession and repentance of sins and, and to confess Christ as Savior. At the end of his life, at the end of this gospel of his time with his disciples, he told them, uh, as Matthew records it, uh, to go ye therefore into all the world, at verse 19, and to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then the very last verse, to teach these new disciples to obey the commands I have given you and to be sure of this. And, and here are Jesus' last 12 words. I am with you always, even to the end of the age always even to the end of the age the the phrase even about being with you uh, in the presence of God the name Emmanuel I am with you uh, reminds us uh, that he is with us always and and forever um, sometimes as preachers we want to talk forever but I get to today uh, to talk forever uh, I want to talk forever for a minute uh, forever is a really long time uh, forever's before there was a beginning and, and after even the end of this stream is how long forever is. Forever is a time that was even before there was time. Before there was an earth or a sun or moon or stars. Before we even had chronos in a way to even call a day before there was night or day or land or sea. There was God in the beginning and before the beginning. We read in John's Gospel in the first chapter, in the first verses, in the beginning was the Word, that is Jesus. And the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. And nothing which has been made came into being that was not made through Him. There has always been the presence and the power and the providence and purpose of God, even before the universe was made. Always God has been with us. And the Lord Jesus reminds us that, that he is always to be with us, even to the end of the age. A couple of Sundays ago, I offered the quiz of who knows what the, the last words of the Bible are. And somebody, I think Russell said, Amen! It is. That's the very last word. But the last uh, phrase in the, in the Bible, in Revelation, if you've read it, uh, Randy Mason reminds me, I've read the book, I know how it ends, God wins. And he's right. Uh, the, the last verses of the scripture say, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're supposed to say always if you're here. Always. Always. 
Forever is a really long time, and I'm not going to talk forever. I just wanted to talk about forever for a moment, that it's a really long time. God is always with us, for us, and never against us. And sometimes, though, it's, it's not always often easy to remember that. I don't know about you, but in the midst of all of this pandemic over weeks and now months, I've often been unsure about what to do next. How to interpret the signs and the times and the age and the information. And I have longed for the company of, of other people. In some moments, it's easy to feel the presence of God. You may have felt God's power or presence this morning, uh, maybe drinking your coffee on the porch or something like that. Perhaps you uh, were here and gathered in the arbor. There, there may be a special place. Maybe you're on your sky deck uh, out on the front, front of your house. Uh, there may be those special places you love to go. You know, campsite number I wouldn't know your number, but at, you know, the lake. We always go to number 27 on point 14, and, and that's our place. You may have one of those places that's, that's near the ocean, uh, and you may not know this, but a positive ion exchange takes place every time you're near water. That's why it's so amazing to go to the lake or to go fly fishing in a creek or, or wading around in the Saline River or to the ocean. An, an ion exchange takes place. You really, truly have a physiological experience of negative and positive ions. That, that change place, look it up later. But, but God is easy to find sometimes when you're in your happy place, when you're in, in granny's lap, when you're in the swing, like I saw the video of Paul with, with Corey in the swing. There are places where it's easy. I, I see two or three ladies this morning that are with their happy people. You know, they're there like the Trinity, and, it, and it's a good thing they're in their happy place with their peeps. But, but sometimes it's not as easy to, to always remember that God is with us. Sometimes we get frustrated, irritable, worried, uncertain, unsure. I, I certainly confess that I have. And for a moment I can feel really ashamed of that. And I confess before God the ways in which I have sinned, fallen short in disbelief, or spoken out of turn, or acted foolishly, or fearfully, rather than faithfully. But I'm also comforted by the fact that all the men and women of faith who have ever walked the earth, there is only one who is in without sin, and that is Jesus. And his, he is always here to love, heal, and forgive. When you read the Bible, you'll remember young Joshua who, who tried to sort of take up the reins and, and he was instructed to be, to be faithful and not fearful and never turn to the left or to the right and, and to keep the commandments of the Lord just as the Lord Jesus instructs the, the, the disciples at the end of Matthew and, and all of the Gospels, etc. But, but Joshua at times was unsure and yet God was with him always. We read the Psalms. From the 1st to the 23rd to the 150th. And we see places where there is joy and celebration. And the psalmist says how good and pleasant it is when we gather together and praise the Lord in unity. But there are moments too when great anguish is found. It's what John of the Cross writes of when he says, The dark night of the soul. Have you ever heard that phrase? It was made popular from the writings of the great uh, Christian thinker and author John of the Cross who, who labored and struggled in his soul and wrote the phrase, the dark night of the soul. If you've ever struggled or sinned or fallen short, you're in good company, friends. Years ago when I was becoming a member of the Upper Room Academy and was studying uh, as part of a, a series at, at Notre Dame and I was staying in a, in a convent uh, that didn't sound right. I was staying in a retreat center at a convent in, in, Indiana, in Plymouth, Indiana. Uh, and uh, the, the, the poor handmaids of Jesus, which is the name of the, the women cloistered there, would leave prayer beads or little cards in the room when I would arrive. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, I would pick up little trinkets to pray. And, and, and one of the items that was sometimes found there were, were the excerpts of the writings of, of uh, Christian folks throughout the history of the church. And, and one of those, I, I want to share just a couple of sentences. I know I need to move this along, but uh, uh, here, here are these words. Um, a Roman Catholic nun who worked for the poor became very depressed, and I remember reading in her journal, and so she wrote, deep down in my soul, there is nothing but emptiness and darkness. My God, how painful is this 
I feel that I have no faith. My God, how painful is this? I feel that I have no faith. There were several times when she thought about quitting. I, I have too. Um, but she never did, actually. I mean, I don't know if she threw down her coffee cup. It's not in the, in the, page, the excerpts I've read. But now, and, and let me tell you, I bet you, you actually know this lady, but you don't know her as her birth name of Agnes. You probably know the name, though, Mother Teresa, by which she was canonized uh, as a saint of the Roman Church. You're in good hands and you are in good company, peeps, if you haven't always kept it together. Even Jesus on the cross said these words, Eli, Eli, Lamai, Sabachthani. And what that translates is, my God and my God, why have you forsaken me? The, the phrase, why have you forsaken me? You'll find it in the Psalms. My God, why have you left me? My enemies are going to devour me and destroy me. You'll see that Samuel writes these words. They are too great for me and too much for me and I'm overwhelmed. And then the Spirit of God comes always as the comforter to the anguished. Years ago, just not that many now, but I guess I'm getting more senile. A couple of years ago, uh, we were preparing to, to move and we packed up our clothes and all the things in the parsonage and we folded up the American flag that we took down from the, the post outside the door and, and one of the neighbors downtown uh, came down the street, a man named Jeff Bailey, uh, to, to visit with us as we were loading the pickup truck and the moving van and, and preparing to come here. Um, and he uh, gave me this coin. Uh, and I feel like I need to walk up and try the extreme zoom. Never done this before. Seen it on TV. Uh, he came up to offer me this very coin right here. Um, and it's called a challenge coin. I need to put my mask on because I'm close to Reuben. And this challenge coin uh, was fashioned uh, during part of his time of service in the United States uh, Army. When he was a, a young soldier himself, uh, he was given a challenge coin as being a part of a, of a unit. Um, as, as many in my understanding of the armed services are given a challenge coin. And they are to keep it kind of like Miss Rachel's purse. They're to always keep it with them. Uh, everywhere, all the time, forever to have this coin with them. To know that they are a part of something greater than themselves. And that even when they can't see each other that they are together. It's a, it's a bond that they share. And I said always. I remember asking him. Even in the shower? He said everywhere. Always. They catch you in the shower without this. It's 100 push-ups. They catch you in the latrine without it. Knock on the door. You may have to do jumping jacks in there. Or run a mile when you get out. On the side of this coin, and this is a challenge coin that, that Jeff Bailey, who once was a captain in the Army, but he became a two-star general in the United States uh, Army. And this is the challenge coin that he offered as he was over the, the 1st Army East Division of the United States, um, uh, including the 175th Infantry, the 158th, the 174th, the 177th, the 188th Infantry, the 205th Infantry, the 4th Cavalry, the 22nd, I'm not sure that I know what FA means. Uh, in any case, this is his coin. Uh, men and women of character, compassion, and commitment for excellence, it, it says on the coin. The challenge uh, of life can be great. But God is always with us. He will be with us coming to the store. He will even be with us always if we may have been one of those beloved saints in our church who has been hospitalized alone. Or afraid, dropped off at the door for a procedure and unable even to see their family. He is always with us. He is always with us. Our brother Melvin, whom we haven't been able to see yet, but hope to soon in person. God is always with us. He is always with us. He was with us yesterday. He is here today. He will be here tomorrow and forever. He will always be with us. Um, God bless you all uh, today and this week, uh, everywhere you go and all the company that you keep uh, until we gather together again, however and whenever that is and may be, gather online or in the parking lot under the arbor, uh, here and there and everywhere, God is always with us. Uh, and, and our job is simple. 
we just love God and, and people. Uh, to love God and people. Uh, I, I do pray God's blessing with you this week. Uh, the last uh, sound uh, of the morning is a, an awesome song from our praise team. Again, I'm, I'm just so excited to be with them today for the first time. Uh, and the song is simple. It'll be better than the sermon I tried to preach. You need, a, you need a Mary Poppins purse and remember forever. And so here's forever. everybody. Thank you again for joining us for another great service uh, live stream from Salem UMC. Uh, just one more quick reminder before we part ways. Next week, 9 a.m., we'll be back in the Arbor uh, doing another outdoor worship service. Remember to wear your mask. Remember to social distance when you get there. Make sure you leave, it, leave your mask on the whole time uh, just to keep everyone as safe as possible. Um, but we look forward to seeing you next week. We will do the live stream service. Same Facebook channel again next week. So tune in next week for a live stream if you can't make it out to the Arbor for the outdoor service. But thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week and worshiping with you again. Until then, be blessed and be a light into this world always. Amen. <laughs>